When the Walter PDP came out, there was a bunch of fanfare. They did a great job launching the pistol, but there was so much media pre-recorded that it flooded everyone's timelines. I received the pistol recently, so now we're apart from the hype, we take a look at how the pistol stands up. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David, and this is the Walter PDP. Now, because you're a sharp cookie, you might have guessed that PDP is an acronym. It stands for Performance Defensive Pistol, and that kind of informs the use of the pistol that we're looking at today. The PDP is intended to be used for duty use, home defense, concealed carry. It is a serious use pistol. So they put a P in front of everything. There's the PDT for like Performance Defensive Trigger. I'm guessing that's what it stands for. You can probably look on the website and understand what it means. So everything is performance driven about the gun. That's why they put the P in front of everything. One thing we cannot put a P in front of is my manual reviewer here on YouTube. All my videos are auto demonetized. That's why you get to watch this video, dear manual reviewer. But you may notice that this gun is completely unmodified based on this picture from the manufacturer's website. I bet you, but you'd lose. This is going to be the most ad friendly video that you've seen all day. And for you, dear viewer, if you have seen two or three of my videos, there's about a 75% chance that you are unsubscribed to the channel. I'm trying to get that silver play button this year from YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it if you could consider subscribing. And if you're having so much fun and just want more, then we can go over to Patreon where we have exclusive content. There was an initial review for this pistol that I'll link in there with pictures exclusive to Patreon that you can see in the description. And one last piece of administration, and this is to keep the FC see happy. This pistol is on loan to me from Walter to do some media with. I'm going to make this video and maybe do a couple comparisons comparing this pistol to other pistols in my collection. So be sure and check back to the channel for that. So with that all said, we're going to cover the pistol from a couple different angles. Since there's like seven different variations of the PDP at this point, this is the FS 4.5 or full size four and a half inch model of it. We'll go over the general information and background on the PDP. We will cover the initial impressions like tabletop, how everything sort of comes across cross, we'll go over performance, getting out on the range, and we'll close with some final thoughts. First thing you're going to think when you look at the pistol is that that is a chunky boy. That's a big boy. It probably weighs a lot. It actually doesn't weigh a lot. It weighs half an ounce more than a Glock 17, but it is one of the lighter weight guns in this segment. Since this is the full size variant, it means it has an 18 round mag tube and it comes with two 18 round magazines that are super high quality. Sad news is that they sell for about 50 bucks a piece, but you can find them, which is important because some guns you can't find replacement magazines for in this environment. The slides, because Walter is visionary and recognized that red dot slides on pistols is the future, all of the slides come cut for an optics. And while they do not offer you an optics plate in the box, they do give you a coupon and they will fill that order within about a week. So I ordered an RMR plate for the gun and it showed up legitimately five days later. So that's about as good as you can do for that style, short of including all the optics plates in the box. That's as good as anybody has managed to do with the coupon for a free optics plate. The slides are Glock cut sights, so you can swap out the sights if you don't like them for other Glock sights. So the world is your oyster with respect to sights. The rear sight is fully adjustable, meaning it adjusts for windage and elevation. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the shooting part, but you're gonna have to zero the sights when it showed up. My sights were hitting about eight inches low at 10 yards. It wasn't a big deal to just raise the elevation and then they've been dead nuts ever since. Takedown is accomplished via two tabs on either side. So you pull these slides down with it slightly out of battery, pull the trigger and the upper comes off. So make sure the gun is unloaded before you do it. But that's how you take the gun apart and it goes right back on the gun the same way it came off, which is no big deal. The controls are swappable to be fully ambidextrous with a slide release on either side of the pistol and a mag release, which is swappable to the other side of the gun. One thing about the PDP and one of my favorite guns I shot last year was the Q4SF is Walter does a really good job weighting all the controls to give them like a super high quality feel. The slide release buttons uh, really do a good job. Like they have presence. They're exactly where you'd want them to be to drop the slide. The mag catch button, it's super positive. It's aluminum, it's got a knurled surface, so it's easy to grab onto. And just the trigger, when you get onto the trigger, you can feel like very tactile feedback right until you get to the firm wall of the trigger and break the shot. So everything about the Walter controls is like super high quality feeling. Like it's very easy for me to say that while the Walter is competitively priced with an MSRP of $699, it regularly streets for about $600 right now in the first quarter of 2022. 
That said, I would easily pick this up and think that this rivals like an HK in terms of price, but it's not. It's actually comparable with everything else in the duty market. So the value for what you get with the Walter pistols is phenomenal as far as perceived quality is concerned. And that's reinforced when you open the case because the case that they give you is like super high speed. There are few people in the case game that are doing it as well as Walter is with the PDP. The case, while it's oversized, has appropriate cutouts for everything that comes in the box and what comes in the box is going to be the cheap speed loader that everybody gives you. Two 18 round magazines in the case of the full size guns. It's got three or four interchangeable back straps that you can drive these little pins out and swap out the back straps if you want. I just kept what came on there because it feels great. And then they give you that gun lock that I promise like nobody in history has ever opened up unless they're using it for something other than locking up a gun because, you know, lawyers. Up front is a rail with all of the rail keys so you can mount your can openers or pineapples or whatever it is you like to mount on your guns. It, it, can, it can mount on the Walter PDP because P. That's right, everything, put a P in front of everything. So getting into the initial impressions when you get the gun out of the box, the very first thing you're gonna notice when you pick the gun up is that it has an actual aggressive grip, which is phenomenal. The next thing you'll probably notice is the gun sits beautifully in your hand. The way that they have sculpted the grip with the hump on the back strap and how the grip tank sort of sinks the gun down into your grip, allowing you to get as high as possible, is very, very well executed. There's not a lot of polymer pistols that has a grip more comfortable than what Walter has on offer with the PDP. As I mentioned in the general information, the perceived quality on the Walter pistols is off the charts. All of the controls are super tactile and give you a lot of feedback. So if you just want shades of gray on the trigger to take it to the wall, it, the wall is super firm, crisp, and well-defined. The trigger is stated to being between about five and six pounds. I honestly can't remember what the trigger pull is, but I'm showing you it on the screen right now. So that's what the trigger weighs. I'm guessing it's you know between five and six pounds. Initially, when I got the trigger out of the box, the initial impression, because there was a fair bit of creep, like you would hit the wall, then you kind of pull through a false wall. But as I've shot the gun, and I've shot probably 300 plus rounds out of the thing so far, the trigger cleans up dramatically. Like the wall is super firm now, but it wasn't always that way. So the trigger will break in as the pieces fire fit together and have like a very, very good trigger. Like I could sit on the wall of the trigger for days and line up my sights and not be at risk of torching around off. The slide cuts on the gun function beautifully. In fact, they're probably some of the most aggressive slide cuts that I've seen on any of the pistols. Like they, they bite you back. It's almost like dovetails are carved into the side of the pistol fore and aft. So if you're gonna do the the competition, you know, like the uh, before the ejection port type racks, you absolutely can do that. The ones at the back are just as tactile. I mean, it's not letting go of you. Didn't think you were getting Rick rolled in the video, did you? The sights that come on the gun are three dot, and honestly, the dots on the sights, I hate three dot sights all around. Like, I wish it was just the high vis front with a blacked out rear but the, the dot on the front sight like kind of seems smaller than the dots on the rear sights. So they're probably exactly the same size as they're painted onto the sights, but when you actually like stare at the sights, the front sight just the dot is much, much smaller, at least my perception wise. One feature that I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I am is the high power cuts. So they're not really high power cuts, but they kind of chamfer the front of the gun. That's likely so it goes into the holster better, but also you can put your fingers right there and just do chamber checks. like. That's a chamber check type cut in my mind. There is no witness port into the barrel or anything like that. So the way that the PDP lets you know there's a round in the chamber is much like the Glock, which is king of the duty segment, at least they have been historically. It remains to be seen whether they can keep rehashing the same design over and over and still enjoy the market share that they have. There is a red bit of paint, so you can look down at the ejector and you will see a red bit of paint to let you know that there's something in the chamber. The gun is a little bit top heavy, but it's not super forward weight biased like a lot of other guns. It's actually pretty well neutral. It's just kind of over the trigger guard and when you put a loaded magazine in, it moves the center of balance to the rear. So the balance is very good on the pistol and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a segue into shooting impressions. So your shooting impressions with the PD you're gonna vary based on what your shooting experience typically is. If you're just a square ranger who lines up their target at seven yards and just wants to slow fire and, and 
print groups, you're gonna think that this gun is heavy recoiling because as I mentioned, this is one of the lightest weight guns in the segment and it has a relatively high bore axis. At least it's not Glock low anyway. The slide is actually pretty lightweight because it's been so weight relieved both internally and externally. Like there's just a lot of cuts on here. So while it looks blocky, there's a lot going on with the machining on the slide. That coupled with the higher bore axis makes the gun feel pretty snappy. It does have kind of a snappy presence when you're shooting and to that point if all you're doing is slow firing you're gonna think this gun is somewhat heavy recoiling but because the ergonomics and grip texture are so amazing if you start shooting the gun quickly which for you know defensive purposes is what you'd be doing you're gonna be amazed at how well the gun returns to zero so despite having a sharp recoil impulse the gun returns to zero beautifully and it I was really surprised like I can shoot my open gun in USPSA and you know, every so often I'll get bullet holes that are right next to each other when I'm sh running the gun as fast as I can pull the trigger. That's more rare on a production or carry optic style gun, which the PDP would fall into, but that was happening more with this pistol than probably any of the other pistols I've shot recently. Doubles to 10 yards is actually pretty damn good. That was my second magazine through the gun. So I was very, very surprised that I was able to get such amazing accuracy at speed. So I ended up shooting a lot of rounds, just shooting doubles to see how small I could get the groups to be. And what I found is that at least with my grip and all of its eccentricities and downfalls, I was able to keep the shots like within like a palm sized group as fast as I could pull the trigger out to about 15 yards where it started to open up. That's a really good feature. So I don't really care at that point when I realized just how well the gun shot, that like I do not care about its slow fire recoil impulse. And it still shocks me. Each time I went to the range to shoot the gun, I was like, wow, this thing is a little bit snappy. And every time I'd be amazed like, wow, it returns to zero so well, I can run it as fast as I can pull the trigger and get acceptable accuracy. The gun is so well set up for performance shooting, like the P makes sense in PDP because it's both a pistol and it's performance oriented. That wasn't dad joke tier, but I feel like I'm trying. Come on guys. And that's dangerously close to final thoughts. So let's talk about final thoughts. You probably have already guessed it, but I really like this pistol. I think that this could become the new standard for a duty use pistol specifically. I think it's gonna have issues in the concealed carry market simply because if you don't shoot the gun fast, you're not gonna appreciate how well the gun is machined. And one thing that we noticed in the Dream Gun Shootout is Walter barrels are the most consistent. They get the best seal on bullets, which means they get the most consistent velocities, which means they get the most consistent results on target. The PDP seems to have a really winning combination here and it honestly has me curious about like the five inch upper and the four inch upper like I'm very curious to try the four inch version of the gun with a full size grip and similarly the five inch version on this frame and just understand exactly how the gun is gonna shoot. That's one thing I wanna talk about real quick with Walter as a brand. The rest of the world doesn't really care about optics, but the US market is putting optics on pistols in an increasing amount, so they, they pay attention to that. They have basically made a police home defense style gun that is custom made for the American market and that is awesome as far as I'm concerned. There are other pistol manufacturers who are Euro based and really don't care what the American pistol market is doing. Like every once in a while, they'll slap some features on the gun and kind of miss the point of what the American market is doing, but that's not what Walter's done. Walter has an amazing first party support for all of their products, not just the PDP. Like if you need, performance stuff for your pistols. They don't wait on the third party to get involved and start making the things that they think users are gonna to wanna to change on the pistols. They just sell them directly through their website, which is an awesome model. And that includes holster support. Like holster support's not been a problem on the PDP. It's been adopted by all the holster makers. So holster support is very good, but they were selling holsters on it with at launch. They had trigger kits they sold at launch. Like they're really doing a lot of cool stuff. And it's really good to see that a manufacturer like Walter is paying such attention to what we got going on in the US market and specifically the enthusiast pistol market. So all in all, I'm really positive on the PDP. I think they did an amazing job with the pistol and I've really enjoyed shooting it. I've got some comparison videos that I'll be releasing feature the PDP, so be sure and check back to the channel for those. So with that said, what's your experience been with the PDP? Be sure and sound off in the comments below and we'll have a conversation. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.